down the road we go. Roll, Riley, roll. Roll, Riley, roll. Roll, Riley, poor oh boy, got nowhere to go. Well, we had a really good comment come in over on the Patreon group, and I, I think it bears repeating and uh, maybe some further discussion here. Our friend Jake wrote in, and Jake said, sort of a multi-part thing, but I'm going to try to read it all off here. He says, I'm wondering what everyone's thoughts are on learning the banjo through the web alone versus from others with direct interaction. I believe that Cliff mentioned that he just got started with a book, but then he had mentors to help him along. For some of us, there is no mentor other than, you know, this guy on the computer screen. Me, I guess he's talking about there. Is that a big deal? Well, Jake, to, to quickly interrupt you, yeah, it's a big deal. Uh, so Jake goes on to say, I think there's a definite disadvantage to learning through this weird parasocial medium but it does seem like it's a really good way to spread the craft of the banjo. I know that without discovering Clifton, I wouldn't be nearly as interested in the banjo as I am. But I can't help but wonder what I'm missing. Uh, if living the music is important, which I think it is, does that make this process of learning a little bit of a sham? Instead of learning the banjo from a neighbor or an, oral, uh, an old moonshiner, I'm sitting in front of the computer screen strumming along to a video. And I can't help but think that's very antithetical to the culture and experience of the banjo. I suppose the answer is that this is an excellent way to get started, but getting involved in a local scene is important for the authentic experience. So, yes, Jake, I totally agree. Um, you know, part of what I'm trying to do here is um, if, 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 if somebody's out there and they're struggling to get started uh, on the banjo or in, in folk music or whatever, well, one easy way, an easy in, is if you find if you find what we're doing out here on the internet. Um, you know, we'll you know, uh, so me through these actual videos, but then the people in the comments section, and if somebody actually gets on the Patreon group and talks there or whatever, um, I like to think that we're we've got one of the better ways to to get people started. There's lots of other ways out there on the internet um, because as you you know, you are not. You're not an exception to the rule or, or anything like that. Most people are not in a music scene, um, or, or certainly not a folk banjo scene. And even if you are, if you if you are in like a folk banjo scene, a lot of those scenes are kind of lame, you know, as, as as a lot of you already know. So, you know, what what am I trying to do here? You you ask is is learning banjo over the internet kind of a sham? Um, so I, I wouldn't say it's a sham. Uh, is is it? Does it even compare with actually living in a folk music culture and learning from a real old moonshiner or something? No, it doesn't. It doesn't compare. But you know, what I want to do is reach as many people as I can, and this is the best way that I've found to do that. I can reach way more people here, interact with more people here than I ever could um, if I just, um, you know, if, if, I, if I moved to Asheville, North Carolina, or if I moved to Whitesburg, Kentucky, or if I moved to Knoxville, or Athens, Georgia, or New York City even. Um, you know, this is a way for me to project the information out. I, I like to gather information, and then I'm not a hoarder, I like to gather information for others. I want to share the information that I've gathered and my view of it, my interpretation of it with, with all of you out there. And so, so far, as flawed as this, this parasocial you know, exchange is, it's the best way that I've found to reach thousands of people and, uh, and basically help, you know, try to help you out, you know, get, get what you're after, right? Um, so, but, and I also, I know I'm coming from a place where, you know, I was isolated myself and I, um, for a very long time when I was young. And it wasn't until I was fortunate enough, I'd only been playing for a year or two when I met Ernie Williams, who's from Sand Mountain, Alabama, and I met George Gibson, who's from Knott County, Kentucky. And those two guys were, uh, uh, you know, really knew their stuff and really showed me the ropes. And once I met them, I, you know, things really took off for me at that point. But I was still isolated, you know. When I was uh, 15, 16 years old, I didn't have a cell phone. 
Um, internet was, was not a big thing yet. I think I just got the internet when I turned 16 in our house. But even then, there wasn't much on the internet. There was no YouTube, for example, so you couldn't just pull up videos of, of traditional banjo music, that's for sure. You had to, and you couldn't, I didn't know if you could, I didn't, I wasn't able to order CDs or tapes or anything. I had to go down to local, crummy, uh, used CD and tape stores and rummage through the bins and try to find some of this stuff. It took me years and years and years to amass you know, just a fraction of what, you know, us today, we can just type it in on the internet and pull it all up. But, so you guys know all this stuff. I mean, it's cliche at this point to talk about it, but, but things were really different in, in the 90s, you know, and I remember that. And I want to be a part of, of, uh, of changing all that. So this is why, you know, I'm on the internet, uh, putting these videos up, showing you guys stuff. I mean, and also another part of it is like, why the hell not? Um, you know, we've got the ability to share it, so yeah. But you ask if it's a sham. No, I mean, it's not, it's not a sham. I mean, for, for the majority of us, it's the, best, it's the best thing that we've got. Let's face it, guys. We live in a neoliberal, corporate fascist hellscape. And this is what we've got. We don't have the kinds of uh, thriving, living folk communities, folk cultures that we used to have. World War I, the Great Depression, the Second World War, boom, it blew all that stuff out of the water. Um, and then things have just changed, that it, it continued to change at a rapid pace, exponentially rapid pace since then. So the reality of it is, this is what we've got. We don't, we, we're, you know, we're, we're not reviving any tradition. That old idea of revivalists and we're reviving folk traditions, that's out the window. We know there's nothing to revive. You can't revive the dead. So those old folk traditions are dead and gone, and there's no reviving them. The only thing we can do going forward is to create our new, new traditions, like what we're doing now. This is an aspect of the new folk banjo tradition. We've got the internet. We don't know how long we're going to have it, but we've got it right now, and it works pretty good. So by God, I'm going to use it, you know. And so also, but, but to, you know, on the other side of that is you and I are not sitting in the same room, like... The full banjo experience is sitting around with one or two other really expensive, um, experienced banjo pickers, um, drinking a little bit of alcohol, and passing that banjo back and forth between the two and three of you. That is the tradition. The other aspect of the tradition is uh, being present for a dance, uh, playing banjo and having people dance to it, whether that's you or just seeing that. If you've never been on a porch or in a room with a wooden floor and just observed a lone banjo player, maybe a, a lone banjo and a fiddle playing and one or two people dancing and drinking a little bit of alcohol, yeah, you're missing out a lot. Um, you know, you a lot of this tradition, I mean, I can get into it even deeper, but yeah. But to, to me, the most important things, what I've learned the most, has been sitting with one or two older banjo players when we just had one banjo and sitting up late into the night, drinking a little bit of alcohol, and passing the banjo back and forth. Or just watching two, when I was so young and they wouldn't even pass the banjo to me, but just watching two older banjo players pass the instrument back and forth and take turns playing songs. You watch that mental exchange, that musical exchange. There's nothing, no amount of money, no amount of internet filming or whatever is going to give you that experience. So. Uh, yeah, so let's, yeah, you're basically right, Jacob. This is a great way to get started, and if you're already involved, this is a great way, I think, to keep tabs and sort of to maintain contact and stuff. But what you need to do, if, you, if you're at all able to, is get yourself into an actual uh, folk music scene. Um, you know, so, and if there isn't one where you're at, maybe try to create one. That's, that's me, that's easy for me to say, but may, maybe try to get some stuff going. Um, some, you know, use the internet, find people in your area and try to meet up. You know, these people are, you know, a lot of people are isolated and, and, and looking to reach out just like you are. Um, and also here's the other thing. If you're, if there is a, a folk music scene where you live, uh, it may be kind of lame. Like, let's be honest, it may not be that cool. So think about, you know, we can discuss this further, but what are some ways that we could make the, what, what folk music scene is in our area that may be kind of lame? What are some ways that we can make it more cool, more what I would think would be authentic, a little bit more gritty, 
um, and, uh, and holistic um, and organic. How can we do that? You know, I don't know. So Jacob, I don't want to take up any more of y'all's time with this, but thank you very much for that really very astute observation. Um, yeah, and I, I, let's, let's get it going. If anybody has anything to say, I really hope you put it in the comments section. I will, I will definitely read it and I, I may respond. Um, and yeah, thanks for all your contributions, both your, your questions, your comments, your ideas, and those monetary contributions that really helps keep me going. Um, yeah, thanks for looking. You'll see me later.